This presentation is entitled Segmentation of Unbalanced and Inhomogeneous Point Clouds and its Application to 3D Scan Trees. This work has been done by Jules Morel, Alexandra Bach, and Takashi Kanai. And it is now presented by Jules Morel. The automatic processing of 3D point cloud has received increasing attention with the emergence of closed range 3D acquisition technologies. The scanning processes have a wide range of applications, for instance, architecture, urban planning, or medical imaging. Another application that stands as a major challenge is the assessment of the features of natural environments. Here, we present a novel method based on deep learning that is designed to segment leaves and wood in point cloud acquired in forest environment. The capability of LiDAR devices to capture detailed information about the structure of the environment surrounding the sensor has attracted increasing attention in the field of forest sciences. Terrestrial LiDAR scanning enables 3D forest geometric information to be acquired at high speed, with application ranging from ecology to forestry with the monitoring of forest, but also to industry with the harvest planning and the timber optimization. As the accuracy of such devices allows to produce extremely faithful point clouds, the acquisition rate comes with a trade-off. Massive amount of data are produced that need to be further filtered and classified. The sensor capture information equally on the woody part of the trees and on their leaves but the nature of the information in both of them differ largely, so the segmentation is required. Our segmentation method is made up of four steps. First, we enrich the point cloud with local geometrical information by assessing local descriptors at each point. Then we define the covering of the input data by overlapping batches of 3D points. Those batches are designed to feed a deep learning model, and this model predicts a label at each point of each batch. Because our batches largely overlap, each input point belongs to several batches, and so it receives several labels. So as a last step, we define a class decision process to obtain the final segmentation. In the following slides, I will give details of those four steps. But before that, I will remind some characteristics of the data we are dealing with. Acquired by LiDAR devices present constraints such as inhomogeneous sampling, occlusion, and noise, which make them a challenge to process. Because of the geometric characteristic of trees, the classes are not represented equally in the point clouds. Indeed, the accumulated surface of the leaves is superior to the trunk and branches one, which make the leaves more susceptible to be hit by the laser. On average, we observe a ratio of the class leaf to class wood of 3 to 1. Because of the spherical geometry of the LiDAR scanning process, the special sample distribution suffers from disparity. Actually, many 3D points are located on the trunks close to the sensor position, whereas less points are located on the upper part of the trees. So in order to limit the redundancy of geometric information at the level of data required for architecture study, we subsample the raw plant clouds by using a poison disk sampling. The first step of our method consists in the enrichment of the point cloud with local descriptors. It has been proven that the classification accuracy can be improved by enriching the data point with their normals. Nevertheless, while dealing with point cloud acquired in forest, it is difficult to compute a coherent normal field. In our case, the local geometry is more precisely described by higher order invariant actually enrich the coordinate of our points with the normalized eigenvalues of the local covariance matrix. As illustrated on this figure, those values would ape in separating the trunks and the big branches, which have a neighborhood likely distributed in two dimension, from the small branches, which have a neighborhood likely distributed in one dimension, from the leaves, which present a neighborhood distributed in three dimension. The second step of our method is the transformation of the data so they can be used as input of our neural network. To do so, we divide 
the input point cloud into several batches of fixed size 2048. Those batches overlap each other and their union completely cover the input point cloud. As illustrated on the figure, we embed the point cloud into an octagon grid, then distribute collocation points at the centroid of every occupied voxel. Then we form each batch by considering the 2048 nearest neighbors of each collocation. Previously described are now in the correct format to feed our deep neural network. This is the third step of our method. Deep learning architecture is a version of PointNet++ modified to accept batches of enriched points. Technically, both input and output of vector of size 2048. The inputs are six dimensional points and the output are two dimensional scores, once for each class. How come the last step of our method? Since the batches of points are overlapping, each point of the 3D point cloud belongs to several batches. Thus, each point receives various predicted labels, one for each batch it belongs to. Then the class decision process compiles a segmentation result. Among every batch a point belongs to, if it's classified at least once as wood, then its class is fixed as wood. Retain this class decision process as it appears the most efficient to cope with the class and balance. In order to train our deep learning model and to evaluate its learning ability, labeled point cloud of trees are required. To generate a dataset representative of different tree features and architecture, we simulate 3D point clouds from artificial 3D tree model. And a collection of mesh models of realistic trees using Blender and its, in particular its plugin, The Grove. The figure on the left displays a tree plantation designed with such a plugin. Then for each tree model we use the LiDAR simulator to generate point clouds. Scanning the complete mesh, then independently the leaf mesh and the wood mesh, we produced three point clouds for each tree that we later combine in order to report the occlusion phenomena that is present in real LiDAR scan. The figure on the top give an insight of the 3D model's collection. As you can see, those match cover a representative variety of three forms. First, our method efficiency was assessed by comparing predicted labels to the ground truth on those simulated data. Our method to the segmentation technique TreeSeg to the classifier SVM and Random Forest and to the regular version of PointNet++. We ran three different tests to evaluate the influence of the tree architecture. Compared the label predicted by those methods to the ground truth. In practice, it was done by computing six different accuracy indices, which formula can be found in our paper. This slide presents the result for the first test on the left side, for the second test in the middle, and for the third test on the right side we trained a generic model on 12 trees showing different architecture. After the training, we predicted the labels of scans coming from a different virtual scan position for those same 12 trees. In the second test, we kept the generic model previously trained and we examined the prediction on an additional tree presenting a different architecture. In the third test, we trained and inferred a classification using only one tree architecture. Our model reaches an average of overall accuracy close to 90% and outperforms the other methods. Compared to the other methods, the analysis of the statistical indicators emphasized the improvement brought by our model to recover additional woody structures, such as the smallest branches. To give a hint on our approachability to scale to processing real LiDAR scans of big trees, we proceeded to the classification of real LiDAR scan acquired in tropical forests. To do so, we segmented trees that have been scanned in Cameroon, which have a height varying from 20 to 50 meters and a diameter ranging from 34 to 186 centimeters. 
scanning process, those trees were visible enough to be scanned from three different point of views. And they have simply been manually isolated after a while. Because we lack a precise ground truth, we were not able to compute the previous indicators. However, a manual segmentation was available for those point clouds, so we were able to compute an intersection of our union in between our model predictions and the manual one. In this experiment, we used the generic model. The following slide presents a video for segmentation result of the met random forest, point at plus plus, and our method. This figure present some of our segmentation result for trees scanned in the tropical forests. Despite the training on relatively simple and unlike simulated tree shapes, the overall labeled prediction enables a proper leaf segmentation. If we observe the intersection over union score on that figure, we can see that our method classify 90 to 95% of the point as good as a human. And it identifies correctly the overall tree wood, but also recover wood structure all to see to the naked eye. As you can see, our method identifies correctly the trunk and the branches. And it identifies also correctly the climbers and the liners that are present on the trunk. In this work, we presented a novel segmentation method that outperformed existing classifiers on simulated data. And that also shows human-like performance in the foliage identification on actual LIDAR scans. As we shown in the, our validation, the actual tree architecture is important in the training and the inference. So our future work will focus on improving the results by considering true-to-life simulated data, presenting similar architecture and pictures to the infer scan trees. Moreover, we want to use a better LiDAR simulator based on radiative transfer that would be used to take into account the light backscattered captured by the sensor. Because this light intensity varies with the material hit by the laser, it would be used to improve the segmentation. Thank you for your attention.